Hello and welcome to West Rail News number 8, our first edition for 1989. Today we have an incredible mix of celebrities in our news program, from prize winners and prime ministers to Miss Australia. There's a story here for everyone. There's a lot of action and even a bit of blood, so stay tuned. Our first item takes our camera to Midland Workshops, where an old stalwart was brought out of mothballs and into action for a big production job. Here's Alan Simons with the details. The Midland Workshop's usual hectic atmosphere was boosted recently with the reactivation of a rarely used machine that relies on sheer brute force to do its job. Well, the shop's opened in 1904, so it wouldn't have been too long afterwards that it was brought in. From what I've been told, it's got a capacity of 50 tonne plus, because it's all steam propelled. The blacksmith's shop is home to the old forge, as it's fondly referred to and it was brought back into operation for the first time since 1987. Midland stockpiles a number of its manufactured components to avoid shortages in times of peak demand. And the time had come to build up their reserve of locomotive axle units, a task that called for the use of the infamous old forge. For quantity control, shavings from each length of steel are tested at Midland's labs first, and then the steel goes into the furnace and is heated to a temperature of 1,000 degrees Celsius. From there, it is taken to the forge and literally bludgeoned into shape with a hammer thrust of 100 pounds per square inch. The force is so great that with every thump of the huge hydraulic hammer, the entire concrete shop floor shudders with the might of it all. Manufacturing locomotive components takes monster machinery and loads of hard work. It's no place for the faint-hearted. Is there much use for the forge nowadays, Evan? Probably about once, maybe twice a year. Um, that's about it. Depends on whether they want axle blanks or they want traction gears as in for L-class diesels or something like that. Midland's blacksmith shop's old forge, an old campaigner that still hasn't lost its pitch. Well, that certainly looks like very hot and very hard work. As with all competitive organisations, innovation is the key to success, and Westrail is no exception. The popular staff suggestion scheme has shown that there is usually more than one way to skin a cat and that lateral thinking can pay off. We sent our cameras along to the inaugural Staff Suggestion Scheme Awards Night to see just what our fellow workers had come up with. We were impressed with their creativity. In 1988, the... Uh, A night to rival the, the fact, Academy Awards. Westrail's first Staff Suggestion Scheme Awards uh, Night proved to be quite a hit with the many award winners in attendance. The Staff Suggestion Scheme has been around since 1920, making awards to employees for suggestions of merit within Westrail. It's a great thing to celebrate all these suggestions. The awards are decided by an adjudicating committee of four. The committee meets each month to consider all suggestions received and to determine the size of the awards. In 1988, the minimum value of the awards was lifted dramatically, providing even greater incentive for those of us who think in terms of creative solutions. Three special awards for best suggestions of the year were made on the night. Bram Kopp received the Productivity Award for his idea relating to the modification of road trailers. Lindsay Brothers received the Safety Award for his open wagon loading status device. And Morris Jeffries received the Technology Award for his new computer program for alignment of rotating machinery on locomotives. The Staff Suggestion Scheme Awards Night proved to be a popular occasion. And an even bigger guest list is expected in December this year. So get your thinking caps on. Well, there are certainly some great suggestions there, as long as nobody comes up with a way to read the news without a newsreader. Derailments are a way of life in any railway system, and their quick rectification and repair is essential. Today's viewers segment provides graphic evidence of the damage that can occur and the clean-up required in a derailment situation. Ten grain wagons and locomotive en route to Quinana literally went off the rails and ended up on their side at the 42 kilometre mark of the Burrican Man Manning section. The driver was taken by ambulance to Wongan Hills Hospital with minor injuries, while mechanical and civil engineering branch crews went into action to clean up and reopen the track. 
In a matter of 24 hours, a 200 metre track deviation was completed with the onerous task of clearing the spilt grain and righting the derail wagons, continuing for a further two days. Certainly a tribute to the cool professionalism of all concerned. And we thank Rod Vermeulen and Glenn Trigg from Motive Power and Peter Rayside from the Civil Branch for their timely and dramatic footage. And that seems like an appropriate moment to mention that if you have something interesting happening in your area, put it down on videotape and send it to us here at Westrail Public Affairs. Likewise, if you would like to see our camera crew in your region to film something significant, simply drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. As a major transport operator, Westrail does the lion's share of mineral and chemical carrying for the state's mining industries. We're called upon to provide cartage of a cross-section of products that in many cases could not be hauled effectively by any other means. Some of the consignments are hazardous, and a few are considered to be dangerous enough to warrant a whole new way of dealing with their safety and transit. One such special cargo arises out of our ongoing contract with CSBP. The movement of sodium cyanide solution from Quinana to the gold mines of Leonora, Southern Cross, Geraldton and Kalgoorlie. Gold, a metal so precious that man has been prepared to kill for it over the centuries. And today gold is an even more precious commodity. There's less of it and it's much harder to find. Gold mining has become a complex scientific process, an industry that requires a high degree of specialization to get it out of the ground. The processes conducted by today's gold miners call for the use of a myriad of new tools. One of these is the chemical sodium cyanide, used in the process of extraction of gold from milled ore. The chemical is supplied by a joint venture company, with CSBP as the operators. They've recently contracted Westrail to transport this solution from their Quinana depot to the eastern and northern gold fields. Without exaggerating the hazardous nature of the chemical, suffice to say it is dangerous. However, it is transported in specially constructed sealed containers. The challenge for Westrail was to ensure that the containerized product is transported safely and efficiently. The Westrail Joint Union's Dangerous Goods Committee was called into action to determine all transport arrangements, organize the appropriate training of operational staff and formulate emergency procedures. Six months of pre-planning included on-site inspection of loading and unloading areas, assistance with the design and construction of the special containers, and intensive discussion with the Environmental Protection Authority and Mines Department. This groundwork resulted in a high-level management plan with safety and emergency procedures formulated specifically for the sodium cyanide contract. Over 2,000 employees from the operational and track areas took part in a specially prepared dangerous goods awareness program. The courses were highly successful and have led to greater safety awareness across the board. The first sodium cyanide solution consignment left in late November 1988 and the project is proceeding with only minimal problems. Into Kalgoorlie we're getting it two and three times a week, up to uh, eight containers a, a week. All staff have been through a dangerous goods awareness course which takes in the situation of uh, the liquid sodium cyanide. Uh, they've all had the necessary emergencies procedures that go with what's got to happen should a spill occur. We anticipate that these other mines will come on stream in probably before the end of this year when they all get geared up and, and change their plants from the uh, solid cyanide to the liquid cyanide. The CSBP sodium cyanide contract, a tribute to the successful teamwork of management and unions in accepting and carrying out this demanding task. It's an incredible responsibility to bear and one that we carry out with precision. With me to talk about this new Westrail traffic, I have Don Smith, our operations coordinator, and Dr. Rob Keogh from CSBP, our client. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thanks, Thanks Russell. Russell. Rob, sodium cyanide solution is a new traffic for Westrail. What's it used for? In Western Australia, the sole use for sodium cyanide is in the extraction of gold from its ores. And it's been used for this purpose in this state for more than 80 years. The new traffic is that uh, for the first time there's an Australian manufacturer AGR and our product will be transported on rail. What sort of special precautions or considerations have to be taken? There's special considerations in two areas. One is the safety side and the other one is customer service. On the safety side, while this product is not volatile and it's not inflammable or not explosive, 
it's uh, toxic if it gets into the human body, and so it's classed as a hazardous good. Uh, a lot of uh, thought and planning has gone into developing a management system to make sure that people don't come in contact with this product. And I believe that the equipment and the um, management procedures that have been put in place are uh, second to none in terms of dangerous goods management in Australia. And I think that if uh, the procedures are followed and the equipment's maintained, this product doesn't represent a threat to either the people handling it and transporting it or the community at large. On the customer service side, we need to recognise that the gold industry is totally dependent on having sodium cyanide available to it. And we have to make sure that the users get the product when they need it. Um, and if we can't provide that sort of a system, then they will go back to using solid product, which is transported by road, and we, the producer, will have to follow them. Don, how did Westrail develop its transport strategy? It was a combined effort, Russell headed by our marketing branch, who liaised with the mechanical branch for the supply of wagons, the civil branch for the construction of a new siding at Quinana and the provision of bunded areas in the country locations, and the operations branch for the provision of rail services. Additionally, the operations branch in October formed a sodium cyanide project group to resolve all issues to enable the safe and efficient rail transport of this commodity. Rob, there was a certain amount of concern given by some of the country shires. Was that overcome? Yes, I found that most of the concerns have been based on the common misconceptions about this product and its uh, hazardous nature. And I found in travelling around the countryside talking to local communities as far as part as Mount Magnet and Narragin, that when you take the trouble to explain the facts about the chemical and physical properties of the product, the equipment we're using to transport it and the management procedures we have in place, most people are prepared to accept that this is an important product for the West Australian economy and that it can be transported safely along rail and also on public roads. Don, from your point of view, were there any hiccups at all? Yes, mainly in the area of equipment needed to unload containers from rail to road. At West Kalgoorlie, the gantry crane had to be upgraded to meet Department of Occupational Health, Safety and Welfare standards for dangerous goods. This work was completed in January and prior to this time Cato cranes were used. At Leonora and Southern Cross it was intended that private side lifters would be used. However, the machines were recently found not to be compatible with our wagons, therefore modifications are necessary. In the meantime, Cato cranes are being used at both of these locations. Apart from these minor problems, the project has proved to be operationally safe and efficient. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your interesting comments. Thank you very much for appearing on the program. Well, turning to a precious cargo of a different kind, Westrail was the official land carrier for the Miss Australia Quest 1989, held recently in Bunbury. We had a camera tag along down south with the entrance to see just what goes on when they're away from the glare of the stage lights. Here's Peter Holland. It's 8 a.m. on Monday morning as a Westrail coach waits patiently for the girls of the Miss Australia Quest to board. Westrail, the official WA land carrier for the Quest, will be escorting the girls in and around Bunbury for the national final. And driver Ray is the perfect host and tour guide for the bus section. The party consists of the fundraising winner and the state Quest winner from each of the seven Australian states, plus members of the National Organising Committee. After a welcome reception at City Station, the girls board the Australand and head southward to Bunbury, where one of them will become Miss Australia 1989. In the days leading up to the final, the girls are taken on sightseeing trips to a variety of southwest locations and for most of them, it's their only chance to relax away from the hectic pace of the media. Westrail's responsibility is to ensure the girls' comfort and safety on board, and the coach excursions are designed to distract them from worrying too much about the finals night. Welcome to Mandra, the seaside capital of Mandra. The contestants are well cared for by driver Ray, whose thorough knowledge of the region and earthy humour creates a camaraderie between them all. Miss Victoria. The big night arrives at last, and of course only one lovely finalist can win. 
But the girls and the Quest sponsors can take comfort in having helped the worthy cause of the Spastic Welfare Association. And Ray, well, the girls agreed he did a superb job. I love this job. I'm going to put him for next year. <laughs> well, some guys get all the luck. The driver was Ray Hibbard, and incidentally, they still can't get the smile off his face. Something that normally takes a smile out of anyone's day is the prospect of a needle. But not so for our intrepid Midland staff, who not only take the thought of a jam with a grin, but have also set a record in the process. It's been said that the guys from Midland Workshop's blood's worth bottling. And that's well and truly proved as they've been queuing up for the mobile blood transfusion unit for the last 30 years. The Workshop's is the longest running continuous clinic in the state. And to celebrate the record 12,000th unit of blood donated, the director of the blood transfusion service awarded Midland a commemorative plaque. On behalf of the Red Cross Blood Transfusion Service in Western Australia, we'd like to present you with this shield in recognition of uh, this magnificent effort. And uh, we'd like you to pass on uh, our congratulations for this magnificent contribution. The service visits the workshops quarterly to receive blood from between one and 200 employees each time. In appreciation of the record amount, a bottle of Champers was presented to Roger Jutty, the lucky donor of the 12,000th unit. And he's sure to be back, as he was promised a bottle of Scotch for the 24,000th unit. A great volunteer effort from the folks at Midland Workshops. Yes, fellows, that's an admirable achievement. Well done. And that about brings us to the end of our biggest West Rail News program yet. I hope we've covered something of interest for you in your region. But if not, don't forget to let us know what you would like to see. We'll try and accommodate you with a story in a future edition of the program. To finish, we'd like to give you a look at a few hours in the life of our Prime Minister on his recent whirlwind tour of the workshops. The occasion, the signing of a memorandum of understanding for the development of fourth generation diesel electric locos in WA. But, as you'll see, being as popular as Bob Hawke means an unplanned visit to the factory floor is all in a day's work. See you next time. Very briefly, I'm uh, very, very uh, proud and privileged to be here. I uh, say to uh, the Premier and the Government, congratulations for their imagination and forward-looking uh, enterprise. Oh, isn't that weather something? There you go. The commitment and quality of Australian workers associated with the best of the know-how from overseas. And that's what this uh, country is about. What's the cricket score? Good idea. It's a great day for Western Australia and for Australia. Thank <laughs> you.